Hello folks, this is Travis. You've probably never heard, never heard of me. Uh, part of LSD Equine Solutions. I've worked on a lot of ranches, worked on a lot of undisclosed uh, feedlots, been part of uh, different riding clubs, saddle clubs, you name it, pretty much done. I've packed uh, mules into the mountains and horses for packing outfits. I've also uh, coached Air Force Academy Rodeo Team on horsemanship. Also been part of the Arizona Mounted Rangers. Uh, also teach horsemanship to the 4th U.S. Cavalry, uh, B Troop out of Fort Huachuca. I've uh, been in the business a long time, also did a lot of farrier work, and that's what this video is about, is the next step is after you've taught a horse how to pick up a horse's feet or the hooves, how do you help the farrier out? And that's what I'm going to show you today. So the first thing I want to do is cover some of the tools I use to help prepare the horse mentally for a farrier being around. And believe me, if you're checking out this video, your farrier will definitely appreciate it. So, as you can see behind me, I got a few tools and so forth. Uh, first one I want to talk about is, uh, is the shoeing stand. You don't have to get nothing uh, very expensive. Uh, this used to be a hat rack, believe it or not, a coat rack. I cut it off and I just put a, a chair knob on top of it. It's nice and short. Basically, you can use anything to help teach a horse how to put its hoof on top of it for trimming. So, this is one thing you'll see me using today. Second thing is, most of you probably don't have farrier tools, uh, no biggie. So the best thing you can use to help a horse get desensitized to a farrier coming down with his tools is just get an old toolbox. Put some old tools on in there, some bolts, some nuts, and just shake it. Okay, when the horse stops moving, just stop the noise. Pay your horse, and we're gonna demonstrate that today. Third thing I like to use, And you can see what I got in there, okay, just some simple tools. Third thing I like to do is have my clean brush in there because I'm going to prep the horse for that. But also, I like to have an old rasp. Now, if you don't have a, a rasp, get a hold of your fair. Get them. Uh, they have some that are used up. Uh, they'll be more than happy probably to get one to you to preparation to help them with a the horse hook. Now you can see I put a, a golf ball up top of here. Basically what I did was I drilled a hole right in the base of it. I heated up the tang and shoved it right into the golf ball. And the golf ball was inside of a vase. So if you can picture that, you know what I'm talking about. But that's not the only thing special about this, uh, this rasp here, okay? Uh, if you look, there's always teeth that are very, very uh, close together, very tight. Uh, grouped and knitted together. That's normally your, uh, your your sharper side in a lot of cases. Uh, it takes down uh, quite a bit when you're uh, shoeing or excuse me trimming the horse's hoof. And then you got this side which is bigger squares and everything on it. And that's the side you use if you just want to take a lot more out uh, at a slower duration of each draw on the rasp. Hopefully I can, I'll make a sense on that. But what I'm getting at, folks, is right here, I can run my hand up and down this, and it's not hurting my hand. And the reason being is because I doled it. How did I dole it? I simply took a grinder and took it straight down, and I went to the triangles of the rasp, and, our, and I just doled it down. And you can see it's kind of shiny there. You see on the blade, I really shined it up. This dull is all get out because I took the grinder to it. You're going to ask, well, Travis, why did you do that? Well, it's real simple. If I'm going to pick up a horse's hoof and I'm trying to teach it to pick it up and get used to a rasp going across it, I don't want to remove any uh, material of the hoof wall, of uh, the hoof capsule. I just want to practice the form, get the horse used to the sound, the feel of it, of this going across it. And later on, that will develop into taking a real rasp and running across the rasp in the, the hoofs to be able to do a trim or a... Uh, or putting steel all the way around the horse. So those are the tools we're gonna be using today. Uh, standard horse with the, uh, with the halter and leader rope. And that's what we're gonna show you next is how do I apply all these tools to help teach a horse to stand there confident for the failure. Coming next. 
All right, so I got the Mustang here. Uh, have you ever heard the backstory on it? The uh, last video of on how to pick up the horse's hoof the first time. There's a couple steps. Uh, now we're moving on to how to help a farrier, farrier out or horseshoer on working a horse's feet. So please check out the videos on this uh, subscription, Velstein Equine Solution, this channel specifically, on uh, how to teach a horse to lead by each hoof. Uh, how to desensitize the horse, also how to desensitize the horse to uh, horse flies, which is on this channel as a video. Uh, also check out the video of how to pick up a horse's hooves at the first time. And this is the next step, which, which is how to prepare your horse for the horseshoe slash farrier. All right, so that's what we're going to work on now. I've already showed you the tools, but I'm going to show you kind of how I kind of approach the subject for my horses to stand solid at all times. Uh, I've already desensitized the horse. I've already uh, fly sprayed it today. And now what we're gonna do is work on picking up the horse's hoofs. I'm gonna make sure that uh, I do that real quick and then I'll bring the tools over and we'll talk about that barrier step. Okay, quick review. I'm gonna approach the horse from this angle right here. I'm gonna rub, rub, rub. I'm going to make sure I can look at the back kind of leg. He ain't going to cow kick me. I'm going to give the cue on the flexor tendon. I'm going to pick it up. Tap, 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 tap. Rub, rub, rub. Bring it forward. Rub, rub, rub. Okay, well, and I'm just going to place the leg down. Remember, that's a key component, a key step, is making sure that you can pick up the horse's hoof and not drop it. Place it down nice and neat. Okay, so I've uh, checked out the... Near side, front, so now we're going to move to the hind. So I'm going to go ahead, shake, 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 prepare it for me. I'm just going to rub, rub, rub. Now you see that hoof is kind of back there. It ain't going to be real stable for him, so I'm just going to help him out. Good. Now I'm going to rub. Then I'm going to go back to this leg. I'm going to give him the cue. Pick it up, rub, 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 tap, 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 rub, 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 come to the front and rub. Remember, I'm not bringing the horse's leg out to the side. I'm bringing it forward and backwards. Remember that lesson, if you stand out here like this, the horse is going to get unstable and he's not going to enjoy this experience. We don't want that. So now I'm going to do the other side. Okay, so I'm going to approach a 45 degree angle. Rub, rub, rub. Good boy. Good boy. Good. 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 Okay, we're going to go to the hind leg now. He's got it ready. Rub, rub, rub. Get the cue. He kind of step off of it. We're just going to reset the clock, go back to working with it. No biggie. Okay, I'm going to cue. Kind of stepped off of it. So now what I'm going to do is kind of sack out that hind leg because it hasn't checked out yet. Anytime I don't feel confident, I'm just going to sack the back out with a rope, stick or string, handkerchief tied onto a stick, and just work that leg a little bit. I'm going to go up high, see if he jumps, see if there's tension up there. Good, and then we're just going to reapproach it. I'm going to kill. Good, I'm going to rub. Good, I'm gonna tap. Good boy. I'm gonna set it down. And then I'm gonna pick it back up, bring it forward, and rub. And place it back down and rub. Then I'm gonna step away so he kind of has a mental break away from it. And I think he's checked out on both front legs and both hind legs. So now we'll grab the equipment. The first thing I'm gonna grab is a toolbox just with a whole bunch of different tools in it, because once again, you might not have farrier tools. So the best thing to do 
is replicate the fair to come down with his uh, set of tools and make the same type of noise maybe a lot louder so that way the horse definitely isn't scared and we're just going to desensitize the horse to that noise so i'm just going to shake and put my tools down now i'm going to come up here just kind of approach 45 degree angle so you can't charge me can't kick at me too well i'm away from that hind leg being cow kicked i'm just going to rub him good boy and see he didn't know about these Sitting there all cattywampus and stuff. I'm gonna bring it over here. I'm stepping on that rope, so I'm just gonna pick it up. Good opportunity to practice this once again. Good boy. Rope out of the way. And you can see I'm using a tape blocker tire ring. I'm not associated with the company or sponsored, but I do like the product. Okay, so I'm going to do it again. Notice how I'm doing it from a distance. I'm starting real quiet and then going louder. Good boy. Good. Good. Good boy. You'd be surprised how many horses are scared of just that noise coming with the farrier. Good boy. Good boy. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Get a little bit closer. Good boy. Good boy. If you got any comments to add to the video of uh, how to make this better, different fairs out there, different horseshoers, whatever title you claim, uh, add them to the comments below. We can help each other and add and improve onto the video of how to prep a horse for farriers. Good boy. Now I'm going to switch directions, change side of the horse, change eyes. Good boy. Now I'm going to do the same thing for this one. Good boy. And you see I'm over exaggerating. Dropping the box, rattling with tools. I want this horse as close to being bomb proof even though there's no such a thing. We're off to the farrier. And the horse get rid of his anxieties. Now I'm going to go a little bit closer. Good boy. Now I'm going to verbally appraise them. A lot of horses like that verbal commitment. You notice I'm not pat patting a horse, I'm just rubbing. They like it a lot better if you just rub, use both hands, and they're a lot more appreciative than the pat 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 thing. Now sometimes you got to do that too to get them used to horse flies. But when I'm trying to teach and learn, I would rather just rub them. Okay, I'm going to get real close now. Good, I'm gonna stop before he thinks about doing it. Now I'm gonna open up my tools, reach out my handy, dandy brush. I'm just gonna prep on cleaning the horse's hoof. So I'm gonna cue here. Now, don't forget, you gotta practice Putting on the other video showed you putting both legs around because they get kind of claustrophobic a little bit. Rub, rub, rub. Get in that good stance and then work on cleaning out the horse's hoof. Helping the ferry out doing this. Okay, I'm gonna put it back down. Guide it and rub. Okay. Good. Now I'm gonna go to the back. Rub, rub, rub. Give cue on the flex. Excuse me. Okay, so I'm gonna push his hip so he's got a solid base. Stand the square. Rub down. Cue again. Okay, right there is pretty good. I'm just gonna pick up the toe and rub. 
A lot of times I'll put my hand up there on the hawk too, because I want to get him used to my armpit sitting in that spot. Yeah. And I'll come down here, put my shoulder into the butt so he switches weight like he's doing. Go ahead and cue. He flex your tendon on the back leg. Grab the toe. Rub, 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 rub. Rub, rub, rub. Rub, rub, rub. Yeah. I'm going to set it back down. Keep rubbing. Now this time I'm going to grab my tool. Be prepared. Grab the leg. I'm going to clean out the horse's hoof. Remember, a fader is going to pick up a hoof just like this around the hawk. Another reason I like to do it on the rub is the tail switching. I can keep the tail out of my face and put my armpit behind the hawk and keep it going. Now, he got kind of really buggy there, okay? Once again, he's kind of a, you see the case right there? And it's going to happen like that. Okay, that's why I like using a, a long rope. And no biggie, I'm just going to reset the watch. Come back over here. No biggie. I'm going to get a kick raise radius, bring the rope around if I want to, and I'm going to touch that hind leg just to help out. Now I've already taught him this a little bit so he doesn't freak out as bad when I'm bringing that rope across and saying, hey, good boy, good boy. Okay, so I'm going to start at the front so I can approach the hind leg. I'm going to squeeze the deep flexor tendon for a cue. Give. Give. Good. Go ahead and rub. Good. Remember, this is just a quick review of the horse to be able to pick up the leg by the time I come over with the stand. Good boy. Good. I'm going to rub there. I'm going to bring it forward. Good. That checks out there. Okay. So you're going to have some minor setbacks, especially where the horse is unbroke, uh, not perfect. Uh, the biggest thing is controlling your motion is don't get mad. Do your best to get out of the way so you don't get hurt. It's never going to be a perfect scenario. All you can do in horse training or working with a horse in horsemanship is try to mitigate the dangers the best you can. Uh, sometimes you're not in the best position. Sometimes you uh, try to mitigate the best position to get into so you don't get hurt. You can see this horse blowing up because he's on broke and we've been working on picking up his feet to get better, but no way is he close to being where he should be. All right, what we're going to do next is introduce uh, the shoeing stand and we're going to help that out. We're also going to, once we're done with that, we'll show you how to use the rasp to introduce it to the... All right, so I got the shoeing stand here and uh, what we're going to do is introduce it to the horse. Uh, some of the dangers are is that it's... Uh, you know, a vertical shaft of steel. We'll be trying to mitigate it by having uh, this nice uh, chair pad on it. And what I like to do is just come up to the horse and just rub him with it. With my hand, not with the item, and let him study it, okay? Sometimes I'll come out here, I'll drop it so the horse gets used to a failure doing that number, and then reach Sherman and rub him, okay? Good boy, good boy. And then what I like to do is I like to bring the foot forward first for him to, to try to, to figure out better. And I'm going to turn his hind legs. Come on. Good. Good. Okay, I'm going to rub him now. All right, so... I kind of get an angle so you can kind of see. I'm going to put the stand here. 
right in front of his foot, thought off to the side, but to the front. And I'm going to do the same thing, roll from top to bottom. I'm going to cue the hoof to go up, rub, rub, rub. And then I'm going to rub, rub, rub while I bring it forward and just sit on the stand a little bit. I'm going to put my foot on the stand, take it back, place it down, okay? Now I want his body over there quite a bit. He's not pointing to the cues. So we'll use the rope here. Good. Good. He knew it was coming up there. Okay, we're going to do it again. Good boy. I'm going to cue him. Rub, rub, rub. Yep, good boy. Especially when they give it up. I'm going to guide it forward, put it on stand. And then right here, I'm just going to rub, rub, rub. To let them know that's exactly what I want. Good boy. Good. All right. Step away for a little bit. Let them think about it. Let them enjoy it. And that's really what I want to do. I just want to present it with a lot of repetitions. He's licking and chewing right now. He's thinking about it. He's like, hey, this ain't going to hurt putting my hoof on this stand. Well, shoot, no, that's what it's designed for. It's hoof stand. Hence forth the name. Okay. And then what I might do, go back to being in the barrier position and watch the hind foot, make sure he doesn't cow kick me. I'm going to rub, rub, rub. Put it between my leg here. Rub, rub, rub while I'm doing it. Good. Now I'm going to rub. Get out of that position, guide it forward, to build up the rep to what we want, and then rub. Good. Now I'm going to place it down on the ground. That's a good boy. So we got that front foot down. Easy pleasy. Now we're going to work on the hind leg. So once again, coming behind, I might do that now. He does a jump. Good. I'm going to rub him. I'm going to place it right underneath. Sometimes we get a little finicky, a little sidestep in you, especially with the fence right there. So prepare to take a step back. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to rub. Rub, rub, rub. Approach and retreat. So now I'm approaching. I'm going to pick it up. Rub, rub, rub. Put it down. Retreat. Good boy. Okay. I'm going to pick it up. Cue. I'm going to put my elbow, my armpit around his hawk, like I'm really working with it. Now I'm going to rub and forward onto the stand. I got it in the cannon bone in line with the front cannon bone. I don't have it to the side. I'm going to rub, take it off the stand, place it down. Easy plays, you let them think about it. Now we're going to do the other side. It don't get no better than that, ladies and gentlemen. Don't get no better than that. I'm gonna drop it. Nothing's happening. Now listen, so I'm gonna reinforce with my rope. So, hey, can you please step over this direction? Good boy. Good boy. Good. I haven't really made a video on up to a tip block or tie ring, I guess I should. Uh, that way you can teach them how to move with rope on the side of the body. I guess I should do that. Okay. Okay, see how he's a little bashful right there? So I'm just going to rub, rub, rub. Pick up the hoof. This is right side, just challenging side. Good boy. Rub back down. Good. Take my stand. Place here in front so he can see. He's looking down at it with his right eye. And I'm just rubbing him, reassure him. Okay, I'm going to get in the position here. Put my knees in there because remember, I'm going to be using my nippers to nip. You see, he took it away. That's no biggie. I'm going to let him think about it. 
and you're just gonna pick it up. But when you got nippers, that's why it's important to clap it with your brush when you're cleaning the hooves out, so that way it gets the same sound as the nippers. Sometimes I'll bring a pair of pliers and make that sound too. Matter of fact, I'll show you that right now. All right, so I got a pair of pliers and I'll just kind of clap them, see if they'll make noise. Yeah. Good boy. Okay, so now I'm gonna move the horse so you can see what I'm doing here. Good boy. Yeah. Every horse has challenger side, whether near side or off side. Thank you, Em. Rub, rub, rub. Rub, rub, rub. Rub, rub, rub. Get my pliers out. Make that same noise. Good boy. Set it back down. So you can replicate the same sound as a nipper just by a piece of pliers, uh, just by closing them. So you don't need farrier tools. I'm going to be like a farrier. All my tools in the box. hip good okay now we're going to put the front leg on the hook stand real quick then back bring it forward I'm gonna rub 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 see how he's landing just gonna rub good boy good and then i'm gonna put it back down and i'll do that a few times just to do a approach retreat i approached it now i retreat it now put it down before he thought about doing it. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. Come on. Okay, rub, rub, rub. Put it on the shunk stand, put my weight there. And I'm just gonna rub. Good. Pretty soon, later on down the road, I'm actually gonna put my body in here underneath his nose. When he gets a little bit more experience, because a lot of farriers will be inside here working, okay? So later on down the road, I'll introduce that. Right now, I'm not too confident the horse not running me over, especially on this side. Savvy? Good. Good boy. Okay, I had my hand on there, feeling like an antenna there once placing down. See if he's gonna do anything Winky, I'm going to go and cue him on the deep flexor tendon. Remember, this is his hardest foot to pick up or do anything with versus the rest of his body. Good. Put my arm on the earth pit. Good. Bring it forward. So I might do this four or five days, getting the horse used to it. I'm going to put my foot on the stand. So he does a tip over and it's going to rub. Just going to rub. Good. All right, so that's generally how I introduce a horse to the farrier stand. Now what we're going to do is introduce the rasp to the horse. Coming up next. All right, folks, it's Travis here. We're going to start the next stage. I got my rasp. And remember that uh, I went ahead and grinded the teeth off of both sides of this rasp. And when I'm working with the horse, what I like to do uh, with these, if I don't have tools real close, I'm just going to roll my pant leg up on my boots, create the split down the bottoms unless you're doing stove pipes. Then I just put my rasp like such, okay? I got me an easy holder and it's out of the way. I don't have the horse stepping on it when I'm working on uh, the horse, introducing him to the, the, the horseshoe and rasp, all right? <clears throat> okay, so this is gonna replicate the sound. So I'm gonna go up to the strongest uh, Position first, which is this hoof. I'm gonna rub, 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 rub. Take it, good. And I'm gonna place it right in my sweet spot for a farrier. The nice thing is if you don't got time to clean it out like you would normally, 
you don't have to worry you just put a rasp on top of dirt because it's not going to dull because you've already dulled it yeah so i'm just going to make the noise and then i'm just going to set it down nice and easy like for him good good yeah all right so you can see how i introduced the rasp to the horse Put back in my makeshift holder he didn't do too bad and sometimes i'll start with it coming forward because it's easier for them to get the noise and the sound and see the action before i bring it to the back so just kind of play with what works best for you okay so i'm going to cue and hook forward and rub 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 yeah, now you can see this. And I'm not taking any hoof wall out. I just get the noise of what I'm doing. Come over here and flip, rub, rub, rub. To the other side. And you can see it's not bothering him, okay? I rub, rub, rub. I put the hoof back down. Easy pleasy, okay? Put my rasp back in my makeshift holder. Easier than making flapjacks, I tell you, okay? So he's got a pretty good groove right there. Now we're gonna go to the near side hind. See if we pull up the same thing. He's nice, relaxed. We got the monsoon storm coming in with lightning, so hopefully we can get this video done before then. Okay, you guys foot shifted over here. I'm gonna put my shoulder right in his hip so he can shift weight. Good. Cue that back tendon here. Good. And I'm just gonna rub. I'm just gonna rub, okay? And I'm gonna introduce my rasp here. A dull rasp. And I'm just going to do a little bit, just like that, and then put it back down. All right? Sometimes you're going to get whacked like that. It's hard from it, okay? But I was very close to the horse hoof, so he couldn't get full power. All right. So we're going to go back to it. If they do kick hard like that, you better exercise them very, very, very hard. And if he kicks me again, that's what you'll see in the video. So I'll make the wrong thing hard, right thing easy. Right thing easy, just stand here. Uh, if he goes kick and do something bad, I'll do groundwork and then bring it right back when he's out of breath. Remember, you got to be safe. Horse got to be safe and leave the horse better than you found it. But guess he's number one? You are. Okay, so I'm going to bring it forward here. I'm gonna rub, rub, rub. He's gonna stand. And I'm just gonna rub. Okay, he's already done this a little bit. Good, I'm just gonna rub, rub, rub. And I'm gonna introduce the rasp while I'm rubbing his leg, you see. And get him used to it. Now, you know something's going on. Can you hear it? He can fit with the rasp. I don't have to rub all the time, but I will reassure him, okay? Now I'm gonna put it back down, rub him, step away. Nice and easy, that nice 45 degree angle. <clears throat> Going real wide. Changing eyes. Good. I'm going to repeat the process on this side. Now this side's a little bit more challenging for him. But we can still work it. Good. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Boy, it's humid with this monsoons right now. Whew. Okay, I'm going to rub, rub, rub. Bring the stand forward so you can see it. He's looking down at it, believe me. Looking at the hind legs so he don't cow kick me. I'm going to kill. 
Give. Good. I'm going to rub. I'm going to rub, rub, rub. Can I get that nice barrier hold? I'm going to rub. I can generally feel if there's going to be any negativity. And I'm just going to rub, get my fair stance. And I felt that coming. I should have jumped out before I felt it, but no biggie. I'm not going to get mad. I'm not going to hit him with rasp. I'm not, because you'll see a lot of fears get mad. Not all, but some. And I'll just whack them on the sides and they misbehave. The best thing you can do is when they misbehave, if it's too much, take them out, move them feet. Move them feet. Bring them back here, tell them this is where you can relax. All you got to do is hold your feet up. Savvy? Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. Now I might switch my, my pant legs. Because now I'm working on this side. Right, because I'm working on this side of the horse, I went ahead and changed my brass carrier so he doesn't step on it as easily. Remember, we're mitigating risks. Okay, rub, 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 rub. Come in here again, give him a cue. Good. Good. I'm going to rub, get my feet out of the way. I'm going to rub. He doesn't like that line there, I can feel it catching up. So I'm just going to rub. Rub, rub, let him know it's okay. Got a felt that one, no biggie. He does it one more time though. I am going to work him with groundwork. It's too dangerous for fair for them to be moving around. Now, you hear that, folks? That's part of the reason why he's moving around. So, I'm going to have to stop the tape real quick because there is lightning and we'll get back to you. All right, I'm just going to kind of do the other side real quick just so we can see. Probably won't be saying much because I'm working and uh, try to beat this storm. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. forward I'm just going to sit here and rub 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 okay I just want him comfortable here and then I'm going to take the rasp and practice using it on him I just want to get used to the sound I'm going to keep rubbing I'm going to switch over to this direction Good. rub and step away All right, real quick, just a quick review, working on the Mustang here. We went ahead and uh, used the toolbox to make a lot of noise uh, to get the horse desensitized. And once again, you don't need fairy tools, just put your common tools inside the box, shake it, as you see in the video. Next, we moved on to uh, actually picking up the hooves, cleaning them out, tapping, using a set of pliers to make the sound the same as uh, farrier's uh, nippers. And then we also use, last step, uh, after introducing the, the after introducing the hoof stand, we moved on to the farrier rasp. Okay, remember we used dull one, 
just get enough movement on it on the, both forward foot position and the forward foot position also the back position using our rasp to get the sound of it without nothing coming off it because once again you doled your uh, horse shooting rasp and they get in a good position there now if a horse kicks a lot or, or moves a lot what i'll do is i'll just automatically do my groundwork bring them straight back and then tie them up go after it again once they're out of air a little bit or they're on their learning side of the the thinking brain okay or the brain housing group so i hope you uh, enjoyed this if you have comments of what you want to see please post them on this video other than that, you have knowledge now. Thank you for uh, tuning in my uh, thank you for tuning into my channel. Take care now. Signing off. Adios.